Okay. Welcome back to another day of positive parenting. Debbie Godfrey's here. I'm Jody Womack. And today we are talking about dial of discipline. Debbie, tell us about that. Yes, the dial of discipline. This is my fun, 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 fun tool. So I started teaching in 1994. That's when I started my business, Positive Parenting, which is why I have positiveparenting.com because I was the first one to teach positive parenting online. And, uh, and so after about 10 years of teaching, those of you that have been through this, gone around this with me, you know there's a systematic approach to parenting and discipline, and it's called the mistaken goal chart. And this is the heart of the program that I teach, the, the, the uh, 15 hour class that is recorded and that you guys can take uh, watching it now. And, um, and the heart of that is, is identifying the mistaken goals. And so for like 10, maybe 94, 2004, yeah, for 10 years, almost 10 years, I was like, I want to make a tool. I want to make something that people can use. And I finally had a business partner that put his head together with me and we figured it out. And I came up with Dial of Discipline. And what it is, it's a little, um, like remember the old slide rule things and stuff where you can slide stuff around? And so basically this is, I took that redirecting chart and actually I didn't take the one that's in our workbook. I actually did a kind of an amalgam of all a bunch of different charts to use this because I, I wanted it to be as helpful as possible. So basically I originally created this as a assistant to people who took my class so that after we did this part of the class, you can put this on your refrigerator. There's a little, thing up here so you can hang it up on a nail somewhere and there you go Janelle Janelle has hers so those of you that have um, purchased the and Himara has hers there we go love this just love the uh, love the bringing it to the class and so this is a reminder of what we learned so this is not meant to be instead of learning the material in the class we go into much 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 more depth in the class but it is a great reminder. And for those of you that haven't taken the class, it's a good introduction uh, in, in, into the process to see if it, it perks your interest. So what I'm gonna do this week is, today we're gonna cover how to identify the goals, which is the outer, the outer layer of this. And I'll go through that in a minute with you. And then I'm gonna spend the rest of the week focusing on, there's four mistaken goals, their attention, power, revenge, and inadequacy. So I'm gonna spend the rest of the week focusing on the goal of power, because that one is the one that most of us have the most trouble with. And I think it'll be the funnest one to kind of stay engaged. And um, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do this week. So this is Dial It Is a And I think I, did I forget to put, or did I put a, I don't remember if I put in the email a link to purchase it. It's $15 online plus a couple bucks to mail it. And it also has a sticker on the back right there. If you can capture it really quickly, you can get the, the <laughs> there's a one hour tutorial of using this. So I actually had one of my other dear friends, Stephanie, who did the recording with me. She's a journalist, so she had the whole mic thing and all that stuff. This was a long time ago when I'd made this. This is like early 2000s. And she, um, so she helped me record a tutorial of how to use it and it's one hour. So those of you that have received this, the sticker is on the back and you can um, get that tutorial. And um, yeah, so I'm just very proud of this because it was something that I created and, and I love. And um, so I'm excited to play with learning how to use it better, more, those of you that already have it and just an introduction for those of you that don't have it yet. Okay, so how are we on? Okay, we're at five, that's good. So Jody, um, jump in here for a second. Tell them how they can get that first handout, the children misbehave because, because that's the one we're gonna look at first. Okay. Okay, uh, okay so all the handouts, when Debbie posts them and sends them to you in an email, are on the positiveparenting.com slash Zoom webpage. Okay, so it's a hot link, you download it, and it's there for you. I will put that link in the chat so you can just click on it and save it. Um, yeah, that's, that's really good. And I also put a link in the chat about the whole package. Um, I was looking for the Dial of Discipline just buying that, but it's also part of the big package deal that comes with the video, the 
audios, the book, the right. workbook, and the Dial of Discipline. And that's on sale. You save $50 if you buy it before September 1. So just know that that's there and an option for you as well. Um, yeah, there we go. Perfect. So I'm going to need a volunteer for this one. And those of you that have been around a while, you know that the volunteers who volunteer always get the most out of this. And um, it'd be great to have anybody that's new that's willing to jump in on video and do this with me. This is how to identify the mistaken goals. So this is um, when your children misbehave, they misbehave because they're discouraged from getting some of their needs met. And this handout is on the website also. I posted it after I sent the email to you guys today because I realized, oh, I need to put that one up too. So there's a second handout if you clicked on your email quickly today that you didn't get yet. So the second handout was children misbehave because, and this is a, um, it just lists the, the reasons why your kids misbehave. And so we used to think our kids misbehave because they're stubborn, they're spoiled, they, they're just like their mom or dad, they have bad genes. And the problem with having, yeah, Jody. Oh, the problem with having all of those, um, we call them old beliefs about why kids misbehave is because they take us in a downward spiral. If we think our kids are just stubborn or spoiled or any of those labels, then it leads us to think that my child's misbehaving. It must mean my child is bad, which must mean I'm a bad parent. So therefore I've got to get control of this situation. Otherwise I'm a bad parent. So what have you noticed happens the more you try to get control of a child who's not in control? <laughs> Put it in the chat. Like what, what happens the more you try to get control of these situations? I see a lot of smiles. Like they're, they're thinking that right. the, op the opposite happens. The worst happens. Right. Control. Right, right. You lose control. Exactly, exactly. It becomes more out of control. So it's a downward spiral. When we hold these old beliefs that children are just spoiled or stubborn or whatever that lead to the conclusion that my child must be a bad kid, which must mean I'm a bad parent, therefore I've got to get control. It just takes us down the tubes and it's not helpful. It doesn't work. So instead we want to have some new beliefs about why kids misbehave and that's what's on the, the handout that I just posted like 15 minutes ago. And it says children misbehave because they they need to feel loved, they need to feel valuable, they need to feel powerful, they need to feel like they have a place, they need to experiment and explore. So basically, this having these new beliefs about why your kids misbehave leads to the conclusion that my misbehaving child must be discouraged. Discouraged from what? From getting one of those needs met, to feel loved or valuable or powerful. So therefore, I can help my child find a way to get that need met through more positive behavior rather than this misbehavior that they're doing now. So how does that feel as a parent? Instead of saying, you know, they're stubborn or spoiled, I got to control. If you say they are discouraged, they need to feel loved, valuable, powerful, I can help them figure out a way to do that more appropriately. How does that feel as a parent? Anybody? They're a little slower on this one on the uptake. I know, so, this one's a little hard. Freeing, okay, that's good. Yeah, here we go. And to me, it's so much more hopeful. It's not a constant power struggle, but there's actually hope like, oh, this is a direction and a skill. Uh, Janelle is saying it makes you shift your actions without guilt. Isn't that a gift? And empowering, yeah. thank you. Freeing and empowering. Yeah, so, so to me, it's practical. Like. The first one just says, I'm a bad parent. Oh, well, I think I'm going to stick my head in a hole and die then. <laughs> you know, like it's just so self-defeating. Whereas this one says, I can do something. So it said, it's not judgmental. It's not saying my kids are bad or I'm bad. It just says, this is kids. Kids misbehave and I'm going to figure out a way to help my child do better in this situation. And so that's why this whole, to me, paradigm is so much easier, better, more practical, more loving for us and our children because it's it's not judgmental. It's just knowing, understanding, believing kids misbehave for a reason and that if we can redirect their behavior through, through firm and kind and loving discipline, 
we can get them to um, do what they're supposed to do, be more appropriate while at the same time feel love. So not damage their, their self-esteem or break their spirits. Have we had a, anybody willing to volunteer yet, Jody? Yes, Amanda oh, is right a on. big and brave person volunteer for the day <laughs> and she is unmuted and ready to go. Right Good on. Morning. Good morning. How are you? Yeah, we know it's way earlier for you. <laughs> <laughs> What is it, 6 a.m.? 6, 7, 8, 9? Um, just about 7 something. Seven. Okay, that's not quite as bad. And it's Hawaii, so like, how do you, <laughs> how do you complain about 7 a.m. in Hawaii? Okay, so you're gonna be my child, and no, I'm gonna be the child, and you're gonna be my mom, and you're gonna tell me, Debbie, pick up your toys, and I'm gonna misbehave, and I'm gonna pretend like I'm in one of the four goals. So if you're looking at your dial, what you wanna do, Mm -hmm. you want to you want to track this outside bar okay you're gonna track this outside bar if you're looking at the chart that i posted there's a thing that said mistaken goal and if you feel so that's what you're going to look at for those of you that don't have your handy dandy dial with you so you, what you're going to be doing is um you're gonna as soon as i start misbehaving i'll be the kid i want all of you to just take a deep breath and go how am I feeling right now? And then I want you to look at your dial or look at your chart and try to identify which mistaken goal that I'm in. All right, Amanda, are you ready? Yep. Everything else ready? And when you think you have it, write in the chat which goal you think I'm in. Okay, go ahead, Amanda. Debbie, I need you to pick up your toys. Yeah, I'll get it in a minute, Mom. Debbie, I really need you to pick up your toys right now. Oh, I get it. Mommy, your hair looks so pretty today. I love how you put it up like that. It's so pretty. Debbie, I need you to pick up your toys. Yeah, yeah, I'll get it, Mommy. You're so pretty. You have such a pretty smile. I love you, Mommy. Okay, stop. <laughs> how are you feeling? <laughs> Annoyed. <laughs> Good? Good. How about the rest of you? Oh, good. I'm seeing, I'm seeing bullet <laughs> Yeah. So what goal was this? attention great the goal of attention so when you the parent are in a situation with your child where your child's misbehaving in a manner in which you feel frustrated or annoyed then you know your child's goal my goal is the goal of attention and what my behavior is saying see that the next line well there's actually i have like my little pictures here the next line it says and my child's mistaken belief is and so you can go down to that one. Let's see, I'm gonna go around my, here we go. Um, I'm only noticed if you keep me busy with me. So, so when you're feeling annoyed and frustrated, your mistaken belief is I have to keep you busy with me, otherwise I'm not loved or I don't feel loved. So they're mistakenly come to believe that they get love and attention through interrupting you, through keeping you busy with them. Okay, so that's mm -hmm. the mistaken goal of attention. Okay, Amanda, tell me to pick up my toys again. Okay, same thing, y'all. Just take a breath. How are you feeling? And then look at your chart and see which goal you think it is. Debbie, I need you to pick up your toys. No. Oh, Debbie, I'm going to need you to pick up your toys. We have to leave in five minutes. No. Debbie, I need you to pick up your toys. No, I won't. And you can't make me. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Everybody feeling it? <laughs> How does that one feel, Amanda? Uh, very provoking. Uh, very challenged. Excellent. Excellent. And so, uh, yeah, I'm seeing people put it. So which goal is it? Power. Great. The goal of power. So what my behavior is saying is, I and I want everybody to understand this about power. Inside, as a child, I feel powerless. But I know if I defy you, if I don't do what you say, if, you know, if I'm deliberately disobedient, then I feel powerful. So my mistaken belief is I need to defiant, be disobedient in order to get my needs met, to feel valuable, to feel powerful, to feel loved. Okay. All right, let's do another one. Debbie, Everybody? can I jump in really quickly on sure. that one? Because sure. it's the irony of it, right? <laughs> that, that that one for me is the one of the biggest triggers and I don't have kids. I just experienced this with adults. Uh, it's the hardest thing to slow down and say, this person is intentionally challenging me and pushing on my buttons and, and how can I give them more attention? And I know you'll talk more about that 
at some time, but uh, I, I love that insight because I think the, the natural tendency is to push harder. It's like, I will crush you. Right. And then <laughs> they learn that behavior from you and your modeling. It's like, oh, when that happens, you know, more brute force and more brute force. And so this dis distills it. it. It makes it disappear when you acknowledge that that's what's going on and come up with a couple different strategies. So, okay. I'll yeah, and it's, and it's interesting for those of you that have taken the class, you also know that there's a secondary, what I call diagnostic tool, which is what happens when you try to discipline this child. And in this case, that what Jody's speaking to happens. So when you try to discipline the child in the goal of power and you don't know this whole system, what happens is they dig their heels in. So they're, they, they get more intense. And that's what Jody's speaking to. The more you try to put the hammer on this one, the more intense it gets. And that's actually one of the ways you know it's a power struggle, where the harder you try to make them do something, the more they intensify that action. And at some point, hopefully the light bulb will go off and you can, you know, go, oh, this is one of those mistaken goals. You know, take a breath, quit plugging into it, thinking that there's anything intentional. They're simply responding with child logic or 82 year old logic that has been learned for 82 years that says, you know, that I, this is how I get power in my world. And so it's, it's simply their, your children's beautiful, most intelligent response to the environment that they've lived in to this point, to how you've responded to this point. So as soon as you respond, start responding differently, they will react differently as well. So it just takes simple shift in how you first perceive this, but then how you respond to it and you start making things happen differently. That's what I call throwing a monkey wrench into, you know, the, the old saying, if you, you know, if you throw a monkey wrench into like some mechanical thing, it, it busts it up. And that's what we want to do with a railroad of misbehavior is throw the monkey wrench in there and get it, get it to stop come to a halt and then hopefully reverse directions. And it does take time, especially with power struggles that are ingrained for 82 years, Jody. <laughs> the tools will work, but they'll take a while. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next goal, Amanda. Tell me to pick up my toys. Debbie, I need you to go pick up your toys. <sighs> Debbie, can you go pick up your toys, please? You're so mean to me. Debbie, I need you to pick up your toys. Dad never makes me do stuff like that. <laughs> and that's dad's rules. <laughs> but I need you to pick up your toys. I hate you. <laughs> Stop. Oh, how does that feel? Very hurtful. Great. Hurt. And, okay, good. I'm seeing revenge in the chat. Great. Yes. Yeah, so this is the goal of revenge. So when you're in situations where your child's misbehaving in a way where you're feeling hurt, like you want to hurt them back, then you know the child's goal is the goal of revenge. And what my behavior is saying is, I feel hurt and I'm gonna make you feel hurt the way I feel hurt. So I'm gonna take you down with me and show you the hurt that I'm feeling. And that's the mistaken goal of revenge. This is a yucky one. It, it, we get we get triggered by this one like no I mean power struggles trigger us but this one really triggers us and just understand your child has gotten hugely discouraged in some way and they're showing you the hurt that they're feeling so again in the class you know we go into some length about this one um, I always say 80% of the time we parents cause it so I spend a lot of time in the class talking about the ways that we cause it and 20% of the time we don't cause it and so I also show you the different ways when it happens that we didn't cause it you still will correct, will redirect with the same exact tools. You just don't have to care whether you did it or somebody else did it. You still respond discipline-wise the same way. The result is you'll find out later whether it was you or somebody else. <laughs> but that's not, you don't have to know that to respond appropriately in that one. Okay, let's do the last one. <sighs> Debbie, I need you to pick up your toys. Aww. Debbie, can you go please pick up your toys? I can't. <sighs> Debbie, I need you to pick up your toys. I'm too tired. 
<laughs> I know. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> like Amanda. Oh, I feel like you're hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how about the rest of you? What are the rest? Of you? Helpless, pitiful, good. So yes, this one, if, if, when you're in situations where your child's misbehaving like this and you're feeling helpless, hopeless, despair, pity, how many of you did not feel sorry for me? Anybody? No, everybody. You didn't? Okay, Janelle did it. So if you didn't feel sorry for me, <laughs> then you this, this one might be a little trap for you. Sometimes if we have a child who does this, we get burnout and we know it's some kind of game. We maybe don't know what the game is, but we know they're playing us. And so we get burnout. If, if you no longer feel sorry for me, you're going to mistakenly identify this goal. You're going to think it's power or you're going to think it's something else. So it's really important to go back to um, like if I wasn't your kid or if your kid wasn't your kid. And I know people question me on that, but it, I, I do. I pretend like they're somebody else's kid. <laughs> it's like, how would I respond if this was somebody else's kid and I wasn't all plugged in? And so the other, the other thing that I found works for this one is, is if you're looking at me and going how pathetic that behavior is, even though that's a thinking which technically doesn't fit into how this all works, I've found that that one's pretty consistent at accurately tracking to identify the goal of what this one is, is inadequacy or um, avoidance. So different charts have this um, called different things. Uh, learned disability, helpless, avoidance, um, and inadequacy are all synonyms in the chart thing, the, all the different charts. They, they keep coming up with different names because I think people get mixed up about this one. Um, so just know it's the ess essence of what's happening here. When you're in a situation where you feel helpless, hopeless, despair, pity, or think how pathetic, then you know my goal is the goal of inadequacy. And what my behavior is saying is I feel helpless. I feel like I can't do it. And I know if I can get you to plead, you know, kind of do stuff for me and feel sorry for me, then I feel loved and I feel special. So I've mistakenly come to get my needs met through this misbehavior. Okay, Jody. let's break them up into groups. I want you guys to discuss what goal your children do most. What is their goal of choice? Because all children come, by the time they're about six years old, will pick a goal of choice and maybe have a secondary. <laughs> and they'll learn. And sometimes they'll have a certain one with you and they'll have a different one with your spouse because different goals work with different parents. So let's have you just have a little discussion with each other and come up with what goal do your children do? And we'll come back in three minutes, four minutes. Okay. Give them three minutes plus their bonus minute. Yes. Okay, so if you're able to come off mute and come on video, we'd love to have you chat and see one another because this is super juicy and <laughs> the chat's really blown up. Today is just identifying them and all week long, Debbie's going to give you uh, activities and, and skills to, to handle this. So t I know a lot of you want all the answers right now and I, I feel for you, but today is just about identifying them and... Uh, now, about identifying right now. is identifying is ninety percent of it, you all. If you if you can get to where you identify it, that's like ninety percent. Having the tools to redirect it is great, and we'll you know we'll finish the the thing out. But just understanding this is going to alleviate so much of your stress. Just seeing it and identifying it and knowing it is going to help a ton. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Let's go go talk, and we'll bring okay. you back in just a couple of moments. Thanks. <clears throat> and they're off, Debbie. <laughs> Woohoo! There they go. Whew, okay. <laughs> There's a man in the class. Yay. All right, welcome back, Deb. I, I actually accidentally left the meeting. <laughs> Instead of clicking leave, but I'm so glad you were the host. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Uh, yeah, the chat, I, I think we have some new people and even the people who've been around for a long time, they're like, how do I fix this? How do I fix I this? Right? So I just wanted to say like today I hear you and it's like you name their pain. Like everybody is going through this and each one of them, people were rolling their eyes and, right. and commenting. So maybe I, I'll go I, do something in the private Facebook group. I'd be, I'd love to do that. I'll go see if. If anybody, yeah. 
That'd be good. For the group or for the... For the private Facebook group, the people that are already, like you said, the people that have already been in the class and all that. Yeah. Um, so... So yes. we'll bring them back at, in like two minutes and then you'll have two minutes to wrap okay. up. So yeah, because um, Arlo, I, you know, he's three, so he's in power. I mean, that's his developmental task. So that's the one. And it's just so funny because he is in it at 100% right now. <laughs> just his little, like, I can do it. You can't do it. La, la, la. And I'm like, you're right. You are in charge of everything, Arlo. <laughs> It's just so funny. And, you know, as soon as he knows he has the power, then he usually will shift and, you know, lighten up a little bit and even a, occasionally let me help him. Did I forget to share my success story? Yes. Ah, oh, darn it. All right. Well, I'll share, I'll share that in the last two minutes because I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to have time to like rehash this. We'll just okay. let, we'll start tomorrow. And um, yeah. All right. So I'll bring them back in one minute. Last night, my dad and I did another TV tutorial training because he we got a new TV for him and it's a smart TV. And so I literally, I put the remote control in his hand and it changed the whole dynamic. It's like, <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. I, that's the power. That's the control. Yeah, yeah. That is I, so funny. You have the power. Love it. True for everybody. Yeah. So yeah, this is, this is super fun. And Janelle said, there's a man in the class. Yay. Oh, is there? Cheers. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, we love dads. They don't, aren't able to show up as much. I think because we do this during the day, the dads are mostly at work more than the moms are. Moms tend to have multitasking work. <laughs> I'm going to work yeah. a little, take care of the kids a little, do this, do that. Dads get to stay focused. <laughs> Not all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Humara had a question about getting handouts, but I think yeah, she has access to everything in the class, so okay. I'll, we can let her know that. Okay. Everybody's back, yay! And I've run up right till the end of class, so we're going to continue on with this tomorrow. Um, I did want to share; I forgot to share at the beginning. Um, those of you that were on Thursday when I took off Friday to go camping, I had an extremely successful camping trip. He did not screech once. There was two or three times that he raised his voice at Eldon. Like it wasn't the screeching thing that drives me crazy, but he, but he like raised his voice, like yelled at him. And I said, Arlo, remember, you know, use, use your words, growl or come to granny. And he immediately shifted. And that happened three times and he never elevated to screeching. And I was so, so excited. And we came home and like, so I came home Friday afternoon Saturday afternoon, I still had not heard another screech. And I went and I was, I know I was talking and my daughter said it's because I wasn't around the whole time. I don't know that like he did it with that. I'm like, well, he didn't do it around me. So I wrote up this thing on a piece of paper and I was like, Arlo number one, he has, he's used his words for three straight days, you know, like award or whatever. And I have that up on the refrigerator right now. And then Debbie, like, Debbie, really quick. Can you give us a super brief scenario of how you set that up? Just in case somebody wasn't here on Thursday to hear what you were doing with the yeah. issue. Uh, it wasn't super brief because I had a long chat <laughs> over and over. But basically, um, we were talking last week about setting limits. So I used the idea we talked about last week for setting limits of saying, um, you know, it doesn't work for me for you to screech and you need to either use your words, come and get me or growl. I gave him three options of what to do instead. And I let him know that if he screeched, I wasn't going to take him camping. And, um, and if we, he screeched out camping, I'm just going to bring him home. And so um, it worked this time. We'll see. And he's been screeching way less and I'm feeling it. I love it. it like my stress level is so much farther down. <laughs> And Debbie, what I love about you and the kids know about you as well is if you make a ultimatum, if you screech, we are, I am taking you home and you don't get to come, you will actually do that. And right. I know and a lot know of it. parents, yes, yeah. a lot they of parents make the threats. Won't. Yeah, their parents won't. Like, and their parents have taken my class. I mean, my daughter is me, you know, she, I raised her, right? <laughs> but she's still struggling with being new mom and stuff. And so she's not that great at, um, 
following through because half the time she's nursing the baby and she can't get up and she can't do the follow through. So, um, you know, we, we kind of pick at each other about that because I'm like, don't say it if you're not going to follow through with it. You're just undermining yourself. <laughs> and she gets mad at me, but whatever. And so, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So they, everybody knows I will follow through because I absolutely won't say it unless I'm willing to stand by it and actually follow through with it. And I have before. And, and this I teach in the parenting class too. With my own kids, I would do trips, like a shopping trip when we had misbehavior going on where my purpose wasn't to shop, my purpose was to follow through on my word. And so if my kids acted up on the shopping trip, I would put them in the car and go back and not angry or not mad. It's just like, hey, we're not doing this now. We'll go back home. And they learn, like, I mean what I say and I'm not mean about it. I'm totally loving about it. But that that um, if I say it, I mean it. So that's what yeah. we'll end with today. Yes. Very good, Debbie. And I love that you demonstrate you are an expert in this. You've been teaching this for 30 years and you still practice it. It is not a straight checklist that works every time with every kid the same way. So thank you for modeling that and sharing your successes. Uh, one of the activities that I heard you say last week that I've been trying to do is to say a statement neutrally. So the sky is blue. My shirt is brown. You know, make a statement with no negative and then see if you can repeat it with that tone when you say, I don't like it when you screech, right? right? So that, right. that concept of neutrality. So <clears throat> with that, thank you. Practice one thing tonight, something that you heard. Uh, and if not, do a gem, a genuine encounter moment with one kid, one gem per kid per day. Uh, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Please invite your friends. We'd love to uh, have 100 people on these calls and help as many kids and families and